If you're watching this video, you're probably familiar with this scenario. You get a property under contract, you put your earnest money down, you did your inspection, and now that inspection window where you can walk away from the deal and get all your earnest money back, that's closing, that's getting narrower. And so a lot of people at this point, they start freaking out. They're like, oh no, is, is this actually a deal that I'm about to buy or is this going to be a huge mistake? And I can tell you, there's deals that I wish I had walked away from at that point. And then there's other deals that I thought about walking away from, but I moved forward with the deal and I was so, so grateful later on that I did because it turned into an awesome deal. So in this two-part video series, I'm helping you determine exactly that, whether the property that you're about to purchase is in fact a deal, or have you been too caught up in the hype? And maybe you're looking at the wrong metrics, and maybe this property in the long term is gonna backfire on you, and it will be a big mistake. In last week's video, I discussed how to figure out the intrinsic value of a property, and you can check that out by clicking on the interactive link that just popped up. This week, I wanna go over a two-part framework that I always ask myself anytime I'm about to close on a property, and this is what helps me determine, does it make sense to move forward? So before we get into the two-part framework, it's important to understand that there's always going to be a better deal out there, and there's always gonna be a worse deal out there, right? So a lot of people get to the finish line, and they're about to close on a deal or a property, and they start thinking, oh man, is, is this the best deal I could have done? Could I have negotiated harder? Are there better deals out there? Should I walk away from this one? And the answer is yes, there are much better deals out there. And most likely there's much worse deals out there, right? So how do you get clear on whether this property is the best property for you to be buying? Because it's important to understand there's an opportunity cost to everything. There's an opportunity cost to buying a property, and there's also an opportunity cost to walking away from a deal. That deal could be worth three times as much five years down the road, and you think you just saved yourself by walking away, and it was the most costly mistake that you could have made. So the key to getting really clear on whether a property makes sense for you is to get super, super clear on the outcome that you're after as a result of doing all this, as a result of, of investing. So a lot of people just say, I wanna be rich. I wanna be rich. And so I'm gonna invest in real estate. Well, that's not super clear. If you get clear on the exact amount of income that you need in the future to get you to your goal of financial freedom, if that's your goal, then all of a sudden you can start to backwards plan from there and start picking the right markets, picking the right types of deals, and know when you enter into a deal or into a deal contract that this deal makes sense because it's getting you much, much closer to that goal that you clearly spelled out. So I can't stress enough how important outcome clarity is just to the whole investing process in general. It's just gonna help you make so many decisions throughout your investing journey. However, when I'm you know, getting cold feet or I'm looking at a property and that, that inspection window is closing the time period where I have to potentially walk away from a deal or pull the trigger, there's a two-part framework that I go through, two questions that I ask myself. Question number one is what does this deal look like in a worst case scenario and what does that do to me financially if we end up in that place? So a lot of people don't think about this question before they purchase, but I'll give you an example. So I'm a big proponent of short-term rentals. I think a lot of people that follow this channel probably are the same way. You probably like short-term rentals. You probably see that there's an enormous opportunity for short-term rentals. They've been fantastic to my family and I. However, I like to analyze every property that I'm about to purchase from a worst case scenario. So I like to look at it and say, okay, what if this property no longer works as a short-term rental, then what do I do? And there could be all kinds of reasons for that. I know a lot of people say, well, that'll never happen, but what if something happens with Airbnb? Or what if another pandemic causes a super long lockdown and nobody travels or some market shift or some new restriction? There's lots of things that could influence short-term rentals or the, the short-term rental market that we're used to today anyway. So a worst case scenario for me would be to rent these properties as long-term rentals. And so I always analyze the property on a worst case scenario and I ask myself, okay, based on the income 
or the rent on a, on a long-term basis and based on my expenses, what would my cash flow be on a long-term basis? Obviously, I know it's not gonna be nearly as good as on a short-term basis because a lot of times you can get four or five times as much cash flow on the same property on a short-term basis. But what does it look like? Is it negative cash flow? Because what I wanna know is does this property support itself in a worst case scenario? Because I don't ever wanna be in a situation where I have to support the property and maybe something happens with me personally and I can't you know, support the negative cash flow on that property and then I lose the property. But at least if I know that the property is gonna have positive cash flow and it will support itself in a worst case scenario with a long-term tenant in place, then I know I'm not gonna lose my properties. The second question that I always ask myself is, what is the most likely case scenario? And is the amount of time, effort, money, mental bandwidth, energy that I'm going to put into this deal worth the outcome in the most likely case scenario? So a lot of people think that they're doing this, that they're analyzing a property from the most likely case scenario. However, what I see a lot is that especially with new investors, they're looking at very limited metrics. So for example, a lot of people will look at two different short-term rentals side by side, and they'll zoom in on the one metric that's most important to them, which in a lot of cases is cash flow. So one short-term rental might kick out $1,500 a month in cash flow. The next one might kick out $2,000 in cash flow. So immediately they, they say, well, this must be a better deal, and they buy the $2,000 a month cash flow deal. However, that $2,000 a month cash flow deal requires a huge rehab maybe. And it requires maybe a lot more capital and it's gonna require um, you know, plans and permits with the city that it's gonna take weeks and months and a lot of bureaucracy back and forth. So it's gonna require a lot of mental energy and a lot of focus that could have been spent elsewhere. And so you really have to understand opportunity costs at the, in this case and evaluate the deals holistically. Because if that $1,500 a month deal is a turnkey deal, maybe it's even furnished already, and you can just purchase that, plug and play, you start cash flowing very little mental energy and focus spent on that, then it might open you up over the next several months to buy several more of those deals. And so you're making several $1,500 a month installments of cash flow over several deals with the same amount of energy it's, you spent on this one property that's gonna make $2,000 a month, but it takes up all your focus over several months. And it takes up you know, maybe more capital and more time and all of the other limited resources that you have. So that's why this second question is so important to ask yourself. So when I put a deal through this two-part framework and I ask these two questions, in a worst case scenario, what does this deal look like? And can I withstand that scenario financially? And in a most likely case scenario, is this deal worth my limited resources that I'm gonna be putting into this property? If the answer is not yes to both of those, then I typically walk away. To me, this framework has kept me very safe and it's helped me buy the right types of properties. It's getting me closer to my clear outcomes that I've identified up front before I started investing in properties in the first place. The final thing I think is really important to understand is that as an investor, you're really just an allocator of capital. All you're doing is just taking the limited resource of money that you have and trying to you know, invest it as efficiently as possible to get the highest return. And so the modality or the method of what you're investing in really shouldn't matter. You should look around at all the options that are out there for ways that you could invest your capital and pick the one that's gonna be the most efficient. And that's why I'm such a huge proponent of short-term rentals. I've done this, I've looked at all the options that I know of that are available, and I feel like right now, short-term rentals are the absolute best way to invest your capital. Not just from a cash-on-cash -cash return standpoint, but from the tax benefits you get, the appreciation, the principal paydown, all the other benefits that come with it, and, in my opinion, one of the least risky ways of investing your capital if you do it the correct way. So if you wanna learn more 
about investing in short-term rentals, you can go to livingoffrentals.com backslash start or forward slash start, whichever one it is. And you can check out the free masterclass that I did right there. And I walk you through the steps, the most important steps of getting started with investing in short-term rentals. If you got something out of this video, hit that like button. Also hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when future videos come out. I release videos on this channel on a weekly basis. I hope you'll check out my free masterclass on short-term rental investing. But if not, I'll see you in the next video.